So, are you ready to don your party hat and join the crypto crowd? Well, joining me now is uh, Brian Dugan. He's a technologist with the Open Technology Institute, and he's here to break down these crypto parties. Hi there. Uh, so let's Hi. talk about this uh, this crypto party. Mm -hmm. I'm a, con a consumer. Let's pretend, and you're going to sell this to me. Pitch it to me. So let's say that you have any concern at all over uh, organizations, your company, your school, the library, uh, a government uh, surveilling or uh, censoring your communication. Uh, there, are, You could go online and sift through mounds of documentation, uh, con sometimes confusing, written for incredibly computer savvy users. Or you could come to your local crypto party or start one yourself, organize one yourself. Uh, and have local uh, computer experts or uh, or computer user, you know, cryptography experts train you and your friends on how to do it right and in person. And Brian, um, I mean, this isn't just for techies, as you're explaining it to me. It's for the average Joe. Anybody can learn to do this, right? Absolutely. The, the crypto party is meant to bring together computer savvy users and regular users to train folks how to use encrypted email, how to make sure that when they're on online and they're using websites, uh, that those websites are encrypted appropriately, uh, how to uh, use other types of encryption, sometimes how to encrypt the actual the storage device in their computers, or er so everything that they store on their computer is encrypted from, from uh, top to bottom. And tell me why I would want to do this. What exactly would I be protecting myself from? Uh, so if you are, I mean, any, any citizen who wants to communicate freely needs the freedom to do that in private and in some cases anonymously. Uh, so it doesn't matter, uh, you know, whether you feel uh, paranoid uh, or what you might be scared of. The point is, is that uh, everyone has the right uh, and the freedom to send whatever information they, they need to to, uh, to to other parties. So uh, you should express that right by encrypting all of your communication and sending it that way. And we do know that Congress is um, looking into several fiber legislation bills um, in order to to protect the internet, rein in the internet. But I mean, what you're saying is that there's other ways to work around even what they're trying to do. So can you talk a little bit about why? Um, I mean, their argument is that if you have nothing to hide, then then why can't we look? Is that a valid argument here? So, so part of the issue with, with that argument is that knowledge of surveillance for most people, the, the, the training that we go through, especially today, to make us more readily, you know, uh, readily accepting of surveillance in our daily lives, also encourages us to modify our own behavior and uh, mute certain things to the, that we would say and, and not say certain things that, that we would otherwise. And this prevents us from taking part in actual democracy. This prevents us from uh, forming, uh, forming groups and communicating within those groups freely because we're afraid that, you know, that everything that we're doing is being surveilled. It may be that uh, I may never say a single controversial thing in, in my life, but uh, if I should ever need to, uh, then I should always be free to uh, free to do that. And knowledge of uh, simply the knowledge of surveillance uh, encourages me to modify my own behavior. And some of the critics of these crypto parties say that it's actually fostering um, a path for criminal activity. I mean, what do you have to say about that? So. Open technologies, like most of the technologies that, uh, that, we, that we use in uh, cryptography, have to be available to everyone in order for them to be, um, you know, uh, in, or, in order for us to have an actual, you know, open system and open dialogue that is, that, uh, that is available to everyone. You know, it, it, we can compare this to uh, the system of, of roads in the United States. Uh, it's, uh, it's illegitimate for public funds to go into paying for, pub uh, for public infrastructure that only a certain number of people can use, people who can prove that they're not criminals for whatever reason. Uh, so in order for, uh, for technologies to be legitimate and useful for everyone, uh, we, we have to accept that that is the, the price of having an open system, of having an open dialogue where everyone can take, you know, can have an equal part in communicating uh, and contributing to these, uh, to these projects. Free software means that everyone can use it and the, and the fact that some criminals will use free software is simply the price of having uh, an open and free uh, uh, system. 
So you're saying that the potential problem uh, of criminal activity, uh, that the good that this program will do is outweighing that negative um, possible consequence. Yeah, I mean, yeah, absolutely. Um, most people, I mean, there, there, there absolutely are criminals who, who use cryptography. There absolutely are criminals who use the roads. But by and large, most of the people who drive on roads are not criminals. And by and large, most of the people who use cryptography simply have a need to keep their communications private. And let me ask you this question. We only have about a minute left, but do you think that this puts a target on the backs of the people that are doing these crypto parties um, for the government to say, hey, I need to watch this guy? So we already know that some governments and uh, some, uh, some, some governments already target encryption by itself. Some, some governments have already blocked encryption, uh, especially on the web. Um, but uh, it, it, using encryption automatically makes you more, you know, easy to pick out from a crowd, of, from a sea of readily, re, of read, readily readable text that's being transmitted across the internet. Um, it's, but n transferring this knowledge uh, has to happen in an open environment, and that means allowing anyone into that environment and teaching everyone who needs to know about it. So the folks who are going to teach people how to use cryptography can, you know, have to go forward and can't be afraid that, that they're being surveilled because that's exactly what they're fighting. All right. It's an interesting topic. I think it's one that we're going to be following and seeing more of uh, in the days and weeks to come. Brian Dugan, technologist with the Open Technology Institute, thank you so much for joining us. Thank sir. you.